Hi there. In this video, we're going to look at the percentage composition of copper in a brass nail via a titration experiment. We're going to go through the nature of the experiment itself, the calculation, and how to solve it. So our first objective would to remove the copper from this brass nail, to extract that copper. The best way to do this, because brass is an alloy of copper and zinc, is to react this brass nail with concentrated nitric acid. This will produce a solution of copper 2 plus ions, which will be beautiful and blue and look like this. We then make up that solution to 250 centimeters cubed with distilled water using a volumetric flask. And then we can take 25 centimeter cubed samples or aliquots of that copper 2 plus ion solution to carry out our titration at a later stage. So once we've taken that 25 centimeter cubed sample of copper 2 plus ions from the volumetric flask, we want to get rid of any excess acidity from the nitric acid, which may be remaining. So we have a bit of sodium carbonate solid. Uh, to try and remove that acidity. If we go too far, we might need to add a bit of dilute ethanoic acid just to remove that alkalinity until we get a good pH balance. And then we'd add an excess of potassium iodide solution. And that would form this. Okay, that reaction would form uh, copper iodide solid and iodine. And that mixture of a white precipitate and a brown solution would form a murky brown uh, suspension, which is what we're going to then titrate against. At this point, we take a standard solution of sodium thiosulfate. This standard solution would have a known concentration, which will be the point. We can then compare the known moles of our reactant against what it's reacting with, which in this case will be the iodine in this vessel. So as the iodine gets exhausted, as we add the thiosulfate above, the color of this brown suspension will start to fade and become lighter and lighter yellow as we proceed. The problem being, it's really hard to tell exactly when that light yellow color fades and all the iodine has been reacted away. And that's why we add some starch. We add that starch solution to our conical flask quite late in the experiment as that light yellow color is really starting to fade away. And because iodine reacts with starch to form a blue black color, we get a deep black appearance to our conical flask. This is much easier to indicate the endpoints. As we add a little bit more of the fire sulfate solution, we're looking for that blue black color to vanish and disappear and be left with a white color like this. And that white color is indicative of only the copper iodide precipitate, which is a white solid, being present. All of the iodine has now been exhausted, has been removed by reaction with the fire sulfate ions, and that means that all the iodine is now gone, and hence the blue-black color of the starch will fade as there's no iodine to be reacting with anymore to form that blue-black color, and it gives us a definitive and very clear, crisp end point when we have definitely used up all the iodine in the experiment, ideally giving us a highly uh, precise and more importantly accurate um, uh, volume of thiosulfate used which we can then take through into our titration calculation. So the next step will be that calculation itself but also looking at the equations for the reactions taking place which we're going to move into now. So that original reaction between the copper of the brass nail and the concentrated nitric acid was trying to liberate copper 2 plus ions into solution. We also generate some nitrogen dioxide gas and some water, which is not so relevant. The key thing was to create a solution of copper 2 plus ions. And this is the key reaction taking place. We need this reaction to work out the mass of copper later on in our calculation. Now, those 25 centimeter cube samples of copper 2 plus ions were being reacted with excess potassium iodide, bringing iodide ions. And the reaction taking place between those two ions is producing copper iodide, which is the white precipitate, and iodine as well. And that's this murky brown suspension we've got in the conical flask here. So this is the second reaction taking place. And the key point is we're now making iodine with this second reaction. And then the third reaction taking place is us deciding to add our standard solution of sodium thiosulfate with uh, thiosulfate ions to that iodine found in the original conical flask here to remove it, to generate iodide ions and um, tetrathionate ions and quench that iodine. And so what we can see here, guys, is if we can find out the moles of some of these things, we can ideally work ourselves backwards through something known as a back titration to identify the moles of the copper originally found in the brass um, screw. And then from that, we can work out the mass of copper in the brass screw. And from that, we can work out the percentage composition of that brass screw in terms of copper versus zinc in the alloy. And that solves the problem we set ourselves at the start, which is working out the percentage composition of that brass 
screw in terms of copper. So it's a very clever titration method that allows us to work backwards to that point. So now we have our equations in place. We're now going to go through the, the titration calculation itself to do that back titration to find our original amount of copper. We're now in the idle position to do our titration calculation itself. Now what we're going to do this, guys, is going to work back through the back titration in terms of the moles of the different chemicals involved while simultaneously solving the actual calculation itself. So imagine we have a 2.56 gram brass screw which we have reacted with the concentrated nitric acid to release the copper 2 plus ions. We've then made that solution up to 250 centimeters cubed in a volumetric flask with distilled water. We've taken a 25 centimeter cube sample of that, reacted it with the excess potassium iodide to form iodine, and it's that iodine that is reacting with our standard solution of sodium thiosulfate, and it required 29.8 centimeters cubed of 0.1 mole per liter sodium thiosulfate solution to completely react with that iodine. We're being asked then to calculate the percentage of copper in the original brass screw. So our starting point must be the sodium thiosulfate or the, th or the thiosulfate ions because that's the only thing we have both a volume and concentration for which we could then work out the moles of. So moles is concentration times volume in decimeters cubed. There are a thousand centimeters cubed in one decimeter cubed. So you have to divide that 29.8 uh, by a thousand. So 0 0.1 times 0 0.0298 which is 29.8 divided by 1,000 means we have 2.98 times 10 to the minus 3 moles worth of uh, thiosulfate ions present in our titration. That was all reacting with the iodine. That means we can deduce the moles of iodine by applying the molar ratio. It's a 2 to 1 ratio of thiosulfate ions to iodine. So we apply that ratio to our particular amount of moles. So to get from 2 to 1 moles, it'd be division of 2. Divide our number of moles from our titration by 2 tells us we had 1.49 times 10 to the minus 3 moles worth of iodine reacting with that thiosulfate. So we have moved ourselves from here to here. Now, of course, all of that iodine was generated by the previous reaction. That's where it came from. So we also know the amount of moles of iodine here in the previous reaction, working our way back through the back titration. We can then relate that to the moles of copper ions by applying the molar ratio, which in this case is a 1 to 2 ratio. So if we have a 1 to 2 ratio of iodine to, to, of iodine to copper ions, copper 2 ions, that's to get from that 1 to 2 is a multiplication of 2. So if we multiply our number of moles of iodine sorry, by 2, we find that we, we would have had 2.98 times 10 to the minus 3 moles worth of copper ions present in our 25 centimeter cubed sample. Now that 25 centimeter cubed sample of copper ions came from an original larger volume of 250 centimeters cubed in the volumetric flask. Now, if you think about that, that is a tenfold difference of 25 centimeters cubed to get back to the 250 centimeters cubed original volume in the volumetric flask. So we multiply our number of ions by that same factor, the tenfold increase. That means that in that volumetric flask, there must have been 2.98 times 10 to the minus 2 moles worth of copper ions. And of course, all of those copper ions must have come from the original copper in the brass screw. So we now know, by association, the number of moles of copper ions that must have come from our brass screw in the first place. And now we can get into working out mass and working out percentage by mass with that information. So let's do that right now, guys. We've got to work out the mass of copper in the brass screw. So we know the number of moles in the previous calculation was 2.98 times 10 to the minus 2. And of course, if we multiply that by the relative mass of copper, moles uh, times relative mass equals uh, mass in grams. So moles times the relative mass of copper, which is 63.5 from our periodic table, we find out we have 1.8923 grams worth of copper in the brass nail. Then we're told the actual mass of the entire brass nail, the alloy of, of copper and zinc together, is 2.56 grams. So to work out the percentage by mass or the percentage composition of the brass screw that is actually copper, if we divide the mass of the copper by the mass of the whole brass uh, screw and multiply by 100 to convert to a percentage, we find that it's about 63.9% of the mass of the brass screw was comprised of the copper uh, in terms of content. So guys, hopefully you can see how to work your way back through a back titration to solve a redox titration, in this case particularly analyzing the composition of a brass screw and including the practical method as well. It's a pretty comprehensive video taking you through the entire process. I hope it was really useful and helps you solve more challenging redox titrations in the future. And as always, guys, thank you for listening. Take care. Bye for now.